good afternoon or good morning for some of you. Uh, I'm in the central time zone, so uh, it's good afternoon for me. This is Double Knot's webinar on deploying a database membership benefit strategy. Uh, my name is David Ellis. I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing at Double Knot. Uh, I've been with the company for, for a year now, but have been in nonprofit uh, admission membership based cultural space for about seven years now and really looking forward to um, working through and going through this webinar to show you how to increase uh, membership sales and retention uh, for new or existing members. So uh, before we get into the meat of the presentation, I really wanted to kind of lay some groundwork about why memberships are important. Um, most nonprofit organizations typically have three sources of revenue. Uh, the first uh, would be considered program service revenue, uh, typically admissions, uh, definitely not an insignificant number, but definitely not the largest portion of revenue for most organizations. Uh, just frame of reference, the Met Museum in New York, their admissions revenue only accounts for 2% uh, for their overall revenue number. Uh, second, it would be earned income, uh, and this comes in the form of retail, food and beverage, education programs, uh, definitely a much larger piece of the pie uh, and can be upwards of 40% for some organizations. And then finally, uh, what we're going to talk about today is contributed revenue. This is typically the largest source of revenue for, for an organization and likely, the, uh, unfortunately, the most to be at risk. Uh, if, if you are aware of the 80-20 uh, rule, most organizations find that they get 80% of their donations from 20% of their donors. Uh, and with the, the knowledge that only about 30% of the U.S. population donates. Uh, it's actually predicted to, to uh, be as low as 8% in the near future. So uh, enter the superhero of the museum uh, and nonprofit cultural organization members. Uh, given the, the potential for decline in outright contributions, members are extremely valuable to the health of an organization. And as we go through this to illustrate, I'm going to be using some membership facts um, that, that were found by Colleen Dillon Schneider, uh, the Impacts Research and Development Group, as well as the National Attitudes, Awareness, and Usage Study. I'll provide links to all three of those at the end of this presentation if you'd like to dig in and find more um, after the presentation. But at a high level, uh, the NAU, NAAU study uh, is a survey uh, and it's currently at 124,000 people right now who attend cultural organizations and that number is growing. Uh, in that survey, they found that membership is the number one way uh, those people think they can support an organization, even more so than a direct contribution. Uh, what some people may not realize is how much membership impact the overall bottom line. Uh, the impact survey actually, um, they surveyed 18 different cultural organizations uh, and all of those organizations had some form of paid admission and a membership fee. And they surveyed those organizations for 10 years and as you can see here, uh, what they found out that was on average a member is worth four times more in terms of overall spending than just a one-time visitor. So the value of a member is increasing, um, increasingly valuable compared to a one-time visitor. The study also showed that members, first year members, uh, renewed it almost to 50% of the time and then for members who had memberships for between two and 10 years, uh, renewed on average at almost the 60% rate. In addition, the net revenue difference from a new member versus a renewed member uh, was over 66%. So the, the more you can have somebody purchase a membership and the longer they have a membership, the more valuable they are to, to organizations. And put simply, new and renewed members, they're just worth way more to an organization than a one-time visitor. So with that in mind, let's look at how to maximize the benefits you're providing uh, to ensure your sales of memberships and retention numbers stay high uh, to help the organization succeed in its mission. So there's really four steps, I think, uh, as you evaluate your member benefits. Uh, the first is market research, and specifically as it relates to this guy, making sure your price is right. Uh, I know this technically isn't a benefit, but it's an important component that has impact on the number of memberships sold and renewed each year. So as you look at your benefit usage, you also need to consider your price. Uh, are your memberships priced in line with other local organizations? Uh, there are things that can impact cost. If you're in a large city, for example, if you're in New York or Los Angeles, the costs are going to be different than if you're in a smaller city. 
uh, and you need to consider your membership price versus the prices of other local organizations. The other consideration is ensuring that your price is in line with other organizations that aren't necessarily in your same city, but they have the same scope. So if you're a science center or a museum or a gallery, looking at, at those prices uh, for similar organizations in other areas of the country. Obviously, finding balance here is the key. Uh, if you're way more expensive than the other local organizations, you may be pricing yourselves out of the market, and you could be leaving revenue on the table if you're if you're underpricing. So what you'd like to be is kind of in the middle of all of those uh, different matrix there. The second thing, and really the core of what we're looking at, and the most important step in this process, is to evaluate your benefit usage. Uh, likely everyone on this webinar that's attending has a list of benefits similar to the one being shown now. Uh, and likely your list was crafted based on a number of factors. It could have been the cost of the organization, uh, a potential driver to new sales and renewals, uh, and maybe expectations of current members and what, what they expect to get from previous years of owning a, or purchasing a membership. Uh, likely they evolved over time, but in order to truly evaluate if they're re resonating with your members, uh, see if your benefits are resonating with your members, is the data. It's absolutely critical that you're able to track usage of some of these items. Your ticketing and CRM solution should be able to report on usage for anything that requires a registration, a reservation, or a transaction as, uh, overall for retail items, for example. So let's take a look at a few high-level examples that should be fairly generic for everybody on the call. Uh, the first being free or discounted general admission. I would assume that most organizations are offering this, but there are other events on your list that could be driving um, could be driving purchases and renewals. So discounts on classes, camps, access to member-only events, opening or closing parties for uh, exhibits, and then also special exhibits. If you're offering any of these options, you need to be able to offer the ability to take these registrations, reservations, uh, online, in person, really through all sales channels and make it as seamless as possible for your members to be able to do this. Uh, and then finally, attendance reporting should be used. You can filter down by members to see how many members are using these benefits. So this is kind of the first layer of looking at your data, who's, who's attending who's registering, excuse me, and then who's actually attending those events. Uh, another popular member benefit is member-only hours. And in my personal experience, this was a huge driver uh, on why I purchased a membership to a local art museum here uh, in Nashville. They offered uh, free preview times and access to members before the general public on certain days of the year, certain days of the week. The attendance is extremely high. I wanted to be able to get in without the crowds, and this was a huge benefit to push me to purchase a membership. Again, another metric that's available through tracking. Uh, if you've got a system that can track attendance and usage, you should be able to look at those numbers uh, after the fact to see how many people are taking you up on the member, benefit, member hours. Uh, and then finally, uh, similar to special exhibits, offering guest passes can be a huge driver for membership sales as well. The other membership that I personally hold here in Nashville is, is to the local science center, and I actually purchased a higher level of membership for the idea of getting more guest passes. I've got two kids. We wanted to bring our nieces and nephews along with us. So I spent more money with the organization to bring more people. Uh, so a huge driver there. And again, it's trackable through a ticketing and CRM solution. So um, those three things kind of on a high level are examples of things that you can use your ticketing and CRM solution to track. You should be able to use your ticketing and CRM solution to track. So the sales uh, and the actual attendance of those items or events. Now, for other items or, or for other benefits on your benefit list, uh, if you remember back to the, the list we showed earlier, there were um, tax deductions available, there were voting rights to the, to the board. Those things you can't track through your ticketing and CRM solution, and our recommendation is to survey your members. So this is kind of the second layer of what you're doing. It's a higher level of feedback straight from your members. So in addition to having the usage data and the attendance data, surveys can provide more insight into the motivation on why somebody purchased your membership. And knowing the reason they purchased and how often they used through that tracking data 
uh, really gives you the key to making adjustments to your benefit off offerings. Uh, the personal guest pass, or the personal example that I used earlier on that guest pass, I actually purchased that higher level guest pass with the idea of bringing the nieces and nephews, but the process of redeeming those guest passes was so laborious that I never actually used them. So I actually had unhappiness with the membership. I spent more money and wasn't able to use it. So without surveying your members, you're not going to know that. So as you look at surveying, your survey should include um, things like, why did you purchase your membership? Uh, pretty straightforward, but you would be surprised at that with the answers you get on that one. Uh, oops, excuse me. <clears throat> Which benefits drove your decision? So was it the free admission, member only hours, access to special uh, exhibits or exhibitions? Uh, are you aware that your member benefits allow you the ability to do X? So precisely on that voting one, I don't know that I would ever know that my membership would allow me the ability to vote on a board. That may or may not be an important thing to someone, and your members may not be aware of it if that's the only time they saw it is when uh, they purchased the membership. Uh, what member benefits are too hard to redeem? Going back to that guest pass example, uh, I think it's important to know people aren't using those, you know that they're not using them because they're not, not redeeming them, but why are they not redeeming them and which ones do they think are hard to redeem? And then probably the most important uh, aspect of this is please rank the benefits in order of importance to your household. So what do you as a member think is the most important benefit? And this coupled with the usage and attendance data is gonna give you the list of things that are A, important to your members, but B, the drivers of why they purchase the membership. Uh, likely, most people are going to want the free admission that membership gives them over the course of the year, the free or discounted admission. So that's an important driver, and you see that that's an important metric when you're looking at attendance and usage data. But there may be some of those things like guest pass usage, uh, access to special events, member-only hours, uh, free previews, and things like that. And somebody may have had high hopes of using, but they're not actually using. So looking at uh, in order of importance, but plus what they're actually using, those two things combined are really, really important to see what, what's important to your visitors. So uh, identifying those high satisfaction but low adoption, uh, or maybe uh, the ability to reduce the hurdles for those items uh, might expand the use of your membership, might gain in resulting satisfaction. So uh, the other thing that will drive, just important to note here, the other thing that drives survey responses if you let them know that their survey responses are gonna directly impact future member benefits, they're more likely to respond on that survey. So ultimately, once all the results are in, uh, decisions will need to be made. So by layering the usage data along with these survey responses, you'll be able to see which benefits are popular and easy to access, which ones are popular but hard to redeem, or not popular and not used at all. So your organization should review these, eliminate the unpopular or costly benefits to streamline your offerings, and to continue to offer successful and popular benefits. Uh, Doing these, making these changes will aid in sales and retention. And obviously, every organization will have different results uh, in evaluating what's right for your members and your, organi and your organizational strategy is obviously up to each of you. So once you've decided on which changes to make, uh, there are really two, two final steps. And one of the most important aspects of that is the deployment of these new benefits. So I wish it was as easy as pushing a button, but we all know that's not the case. Uh, a few areas to consider as you roll out um, restructured benefits. Um, meet with other departments in, in the organization to confirm the impact of any proposed changes. If you have um, you know, an IMAX uh, or film option and you're giving away free film passes, if you're gonna change the number of film passes that are offered, uh, maybe more or less, that could impact the budget of that department. So highly recommend you check with other areas and other departments that, that will um, confirm the impact of those changes. Uh, communication, communication, communication. So on the internal side, communication with frontline staff, arm them with talking points, updated benefit explanation charts, anything to uh, help them seamlessly transition to the new structure. And it's important to note that 
any changes you make will only impact existing members. If you choose to change it immediately and it applies to all of your members, those are the people that you need to message to. All of your new members coming in, it's no change for them. They come in seeing the new benefits and they don't know what was there or what uh, could have been there. Um, so make sure you're communicating to your existing staff. Obviously, update your systems. Uh, any uh, information in your ticketing and CRM solution, preferably time to go live with the new structure that you're going to roll out. Uh, update any materials or websites that relay member benefit information. So you want to time uh, the the date of the change along with all the information on your site to make sure that's seamless. And if I didn't say it enough before, communicate, communicate, communicate. So um, your existing members, again, as I talked before, uh, if you're making the switch for your existing members, you need to make sure that they are aware of the changes. Uh, send out an email detailing the changes. Uh, relay that their survey responses were what directly impacted this, and it will likely help alleviate any issues when they arrive for a future visit. The important thing to note here is if you change your benefit strategy, Based on responses they gave you, this will likely be a positive change for your new members, so it should result in limited complaints uh, over your entire membership base, but the importance is communicating um, to, to make sure member loyalty stays high. And then finally, track and report. Ensuring reporting, uh, noting when the membership benefit changes went into effect, and you want to have uh, a static number for you know for your previous 12 months of membership sales and renewals. So as you roll out this program, you're going to be able to uh, note the difference and the changes. So, and that's really the most important part of this process is the success of the changes. So over the next few months, you should be able to measure that impact uh, and make sure that your changes are having the desired impact. So make sure you do some benchmark reporting from previous sales and reporting, or from previous sales and renewals, <clears throat> and then uh, you may be able to see an uptick in the usage of benefits, attendance, and or renewals. And if you have multiple uh, years of history from your reporting, you can compare the same month of, of sales for over previous years, as well as renewals to see if the changes are having the impact on new sales as well. So that's the end of the content that I have. I wanted to share with you the resources that I talked about on the front end. Uh, Colleen Dillon Schneider, if you're not uh, reading her blog on a regular basis, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it's data-driven decision-making, and she provides some great insight uh, in an anonymized fashion. The two pieces of data that she uses on the back end uh, are the impact study and the NAAU study. So. Um, with that, if anybody has any questions, I'm open uh, to questions on your go to webinar dashboard. There is an option to ask questions or raise your hand, and I'm happy to uh, answer any questions about this. We'll give it a couple of minutes here. Okay. So, uh, doesn't look like we have any questions. Uh, if if you saw something you wanted to know more information about, if you're curious about Double Knot, uh, our system does have all of these pieces and parts available for use. Uh, we can take the registrations, reservations, sell the membership, we can track the usage of all of that. We'd be more than willing to talk to anybody who's not using Double Knot. Uh, if you're a current customer and you're interested in learning how to do some of these features, uh, we certainly welcome uh, an inquiry to our support team and we can walk through those those steps with you so again thank you for your interest appreciate uh, your time and um, again David Ellis uh, and you can reach me at David at double knot com my direct line is six one five six four five four eight three eight and thank you for your time